It's safe to say Todd Bowley and co are definitely here for the long run because what they're doing now is building a blueprint. Is not only did they bid for Romeo Lavia on deadline day to try to secure his assets and had a 50 million pound bid rejected and potentially now going back for Alvarez in January, that's what is being reported, but they're laying the foundations for a better tomorrow. Chelsea FC is gonna be in a very good place going forward, people. You just have to believe in this and what I'm going to tell you today is the evidence for this. Welcome to the Guff guys you guys. I thought the window was closed and the drama would stop but it didn't. It intensified and the news coming out of Chelsea is amazing. The news coming out of Chelsea is one of direction, one of prosperity and one of affection to all facets of the club. Whether it's the women's team, whether it's the youth team, whether it's the first team, there is a clear vision that's being portrayed in front of us and we all need to gather behind. So we'll talk about the news regarding Lavia and Alvarez and I'll break it down for you. But then we're gonna go into the changes. It's the 4th of September, three days after the transfer window. The number of changes that have happened within Chelsea FC are crazy. Let's get into it. But you guys already know the deal. If you wanna support the channel, you wanna help me out, hit the like button. It actually does a lot. More people watch it. YouTube suggests it more. It's those age old, age old averages, right? Subscribe to the channel. And if you guys wanna send me a DM asking any type of questions regarding anything to do with football, in the pinned comment is my Instagram. Follow me there and hit me up with a DM. More than happy to answer. Usually reply by a voice note. Becomes more informed. All right, so Chelsea, not only did they chase Edison Alvarez, Sangari, and then finally get Zacharia on deadline day, which was absolutely crazy. They actually went after Romeo Lavia. So Romeo Lavia absolutely destroyed Chelsea when it came down to Southampton versus Chelsea in that midfield three he bullied Chelsea he absolutely imposed himself on that game at the age of 18 and took over and my question arises where were your scouts when Southampton found Romeo Lavia I understand he needs a platform to do this and normally I'm one of those that argues well you know what in the two years that he was signed he usually has time to develop he wouldn't have been this player but it's been four games four games is 300 uh, 360 minutes of football you can't convince me that in four games Lavia turned into a completely different player. But Chelsea had informal verbal conversations with Southampton and they said 50 million pounds. Yes or no? Southampton said no. They're not even considering it. This is not even a discussion. Manchester City have 40 million pounds buyback clause on this player. Chelsea have spoken to Southampton and the interest clearly resides there. But what does this tell me? It tells me we're seeking to buy a CDM and we're gonna change the way we're playing football. However, the rumors didn't stop there. With the Ajax account that has been very reputable, I feel for the guy because he's losing players left, right and center. He came out and said, Ajax a green light in Alvarez in January to Chelsea. As long as the money's right, this is a green light. Alvarez is getting reassurances that his deal is not postponed permanently. Chelsea have been actually actively discussing and even having discussions into this week, potentially with Ajax agreeing a pre-deal so that in January, he can come and slide into the team. This is big news, guys. Because like I said, this is a clear change in structure, a clear change in alternative. We're going away from two eights and two sixes that are box to box to potentially a one with two midfielders getting the best out of our eights. It's very exciting and it's something that I really love and I'm really. One thing about Todd Bowley and Cole, they are giving Given Thomas Tuchel a lot of creativity and they're giving him a lot of room to put in his own input. However, whether that input is good or bad, we need to discuss because he spoke about Billy Gilmore and this was very alarming for me. So he expressed that Billy had different intentions to the ones that Chelsea had for him. Billy had an initial role at Chelsea, he pushed to get more minutes, went to Norwich, got relegated, and he said it's very unlikely that you're gonna come back as a relegated player to come and play for a top four side or a side competing for the title. It's very unlikely, so we agreed to sell it. And that, from Tuchel, in my opinion, is nasty. Because I'm going to say this to you. You're playing Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Ruben got relegated with Fulham. Billy Gilmore never asked to go to Norwich. You sent him to your boy, Lord Farquhar, yeah? And Lord Farquhar did not use him, got himself sacked next thing you know a new manager comes in doesn't rate Billy because he's a lone player what does that tell you it tells you that this was poor mismanagement and Billy's better than nine million pounds Billy might not be a world beater but he's better than nine million pounds this stinks of Tuchel made up his mind there was nothing going to change it and Billy just said you know what I know where the door is let me leave the board and co so Todd and co apparently were very alarmed by Jorginho Jorginho's new contract does not look like it's going to be negotiated or renewed. They are actively talking to Angola Kante. They want to get Angola Kante to stay because Tuku loves it. Jorginho, 
not as much. His conversations are at a pause. They are not continuing. To confirm, Jorginho is a free agent next year. N'Golo Kante is a free agent next year. They've already started renegotiating with Engie. They have not started with Jorginho. The assumption was both players would get a new deal. After what they've seen in the first four games, Jorginho is not being considered people. And this is massive. What I am also finding very interesting is the number of players that are re-signing with the club that are young. Look, the director of football, Chelsea have not given up on Michael Edwards. Chelsea are adamant they want Michael Edwards. If they don't get him, they're getting the Molico guy, Paul Mitchell, and a former player apparently is in the running as well. But it's very interesting, it's very telling to the way Chelsea are approaching this situation. Because a lot of people are getting new contracts. Players that you don't think would be signing new deals are getting new deals. Number one, Armando Broja re-signed a six plus one year deal. Armando Broja has got a new contract and it looks set to stay at Chelsea for the foreseeable future. He spoke about the influence of Didier Drogba on him when he, when he first joined the club. He spoke about how much he loves the club. He spoke about the magnitude. He was explaining that there's a road to cross to the first team training and the youth team training and it feels like so long away but even though it was a little road and it was so nice to see a young player that came through the ranks express his feelings tell us give us the insight give us the like attention to detail of how much it meant to him he's staying then it looks set that Reese James is about to become one of the best paid players in the club six plus one year this is a clear shift in strategy from Chelsea. Chelsea are going youth and they're going strong. And if you look at it this way, Harvey Vale signed a new deal, went on loan. Webster signs a new deal. Charlie Webster looked set to be leaving the club. If you don't know who he is, he's a young player who's a number eight and potentially can do a role in the six. He was set to leave the club on a free this summer, yet the club somehow persuaded him to sign a new deal and now that he's re-signed, he's part of the plan. And this is very exciting. Not only do we spend an abnormal amount of money on, on Chiquamenca, Salina, Casadilla, we're keeping our own. We are expanding the way we're going to grow as a club. And it's so enlightening to see that there is a plan. Evidently, there is a plan going forward. Whether this plan works or not is interesting. Whether this plan is gonna be even with Thomas Tuchel is very interesting because evidently, Tuchel is not as integral to the plans as everyone makes the scene. Because decisions like this are not win now decisions. They're five years in the future decisions. And who knows if Tuchel's gonna be here. What is also very evident for me is Tuchel's conference, press conference conversations after the game yesterday. Chelsea beat West Ham and Tuchel said, I can't wait to get back to what I'm good at coaching. But I think he's extremely self-aware and I think he knows he was out of his depth. I think he understands this is not the job for him. He's a coach. Give him the tools, he'll make it work. He will build a beautiful team that's going to function well. Chasing players, negotiating with players, playing with players, agents and egos and ticking boxes is not him. I don't think he ever wants to do that role and it's very interesting. And finally, the last bit of information that I need to tell you guys is about Zakharian. So Arsene Zakharian is a player that Chelsea couldn't sign. I explained it in a video on deadline day due to the swift. They couldn't pet transfer money to Russia, but the player spoke out. So reports in Russia, and this is where you don't need to, you need people like me, all right? You need people like me. I speak Russian. I'm fluent in Russian. Arsene Zakharian, explicitly said we will see what happens and then in the near future and in January potentially there's a move we will see the journalist is reporting with I hope there's a big difference between we will see and I hope because we will see says nothing's agreed yet I hope is I want to join it's completely different his teammate behind him was walking past going Chelsea 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 you know what journalists are sneaky buggers you know they really frustrate me they really do but this was the Kafka's view, guys. Don't fall for the traps. Don't fall for people's misquotations, especially from foreign languages to English, because sometimes the context is all wrong. Sometimes it's better to listen to it and get it from a non-journalist, a fan. Get them to listen to it and they'll translate it to you. But guys, this was the Kafka's view. I hope you lot enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are happy about the result yesterday because we needed the three points. I'm happy, you're happy. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Bring on Dinamo Zagreb on Tuesday.